Hey guys, it's Courtney from the Ivy League here, and today's video comes from a special request made by Adam, and he wanted to know if I could explain osmosis and how they relate to IV fluids. So today we're going to use an egg and do something completely unexpected with it to demonstrate osmosis. So I'm going to put a list of the things that you need for this project, and you're going to start out by preparing your eggs. You're going to put them in vinegar and the acetic acid from the vinegar is going to interact with the calcium in the shell and you will just be able to rub it off as you can see here and once you get that completely off it'll take about 24 hours then you can prepare your solutions so the first one is a hypotonic solution and for my hypotonic solution I just use plain water my isotonic solution, I prepared 0.9% normal saline by mixing salt with water and warming it up on the stove. And for the hypotonic solution, I prepared a little bit of 3% normal saline and we're going to pour in a bunch of corn syrup with that to make that hypertonic. So now that I have my solutions prepared, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an egg in the hypotonic and the hypertonic solutions and see what happens with those and then I'm going to swap them and see how that affects the egg and then I'm going to take one of them out probably the hypertonic and put that into the isotonic solution and see if that corrects what the hypertonic solution did to the membrane. So this is the hypertonic solution, and I've already added a little bit of corn syrup here, but I'm going to go ahead and add some more because you really want it to be super saturated with particles. Um, basically, hypertonic means that the particles in the fluid are greater than the particles in the cell. So I chose to use a chicken egg because it is a large single cell and it does already have a semi-permeable permeable membrane in it. Um, now it is under that calcium shell, but the, using the vinegar, you'll be able to get that off pretty easily and we'll be able to see how things are traveling in and out of the cell. So when people refer to semi-permeable membranes, what they're talking about is that the membrane is actually allowing some things to enter and other things to stay out. So you'll find that this experiment is very much like a human cell, even though it's on a much larger level. It's just easier to see. So now that we got the shell off of our eggs, we're going to go ahead and put them in each solution. And you'll notice that they're still a little bit puffy and they bounce a little bit, but there is water in vinegar to dilute it, so that's why they're a little bit puffy still. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in the hypertonic solution and one in the hypotonic solution. And we're just going to go ahead and speed this up a lot so you can kind of see the effect. You need to be especially careful when using a hypotonic solution in patients that have things like head trauma or diseases that would affect neuro. You're going to want to check neuro on these patients because any swelling of the cell, as you can see here, it's getting pretty big. Um, if that swelling occurs in the brain cells, you will get into trouble with that. So you want to make sure that you're taking all the precautions and you're checking your patient frequently if you are using that. So now let's talk about hypertonic solution. And the hypertonic solution is a solution that's greater than 1026 milliosmoles per liter. So we're going to go ahead and take these out now and then we'll talk about talk more about hypertonic solutions. So this is the this is the egg that was in the hypotonic solution. And you can see that it's pretty it's puffed up pretty good. It more than fills the palm of my hand. So that's definitely bigger than it was before. And you can just imagine if this was a brain cell swelling like this, what effect it would have on a patient's neuro status. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And then we're going to go ahead and take out the egg from the 
hypertonic solution and we're going to compare the two and see if there's any big difference. So when a cell is in a hypertonic solution, the fluid gets pulled out of the cell itself to go into the surrounding fluid. And what you get is called crenation. What it means is that the cell will actually shrink or shrivel. And you can see how it's, we'll put them side by side here. You can see how the cell that was in, or the egg that was in the hypotonic solution is a lot bigger than the egg that was in the hypertonic solution. And the coloring on the hypertonic egg is just because I used dark corn syrup, which was probably not the best idea, but um, you can see how much smaller it is than the egg that was in the hypotonic solution. So when you're giving these hypertonic solutions, like 3% normal saline, uh, you want to make sure that you are checking the cardiac status of the patient because you don't want to give it to a patient with CHF. And you also don't want to give it to a patient with some sort of renal disorder because it will put them at risk for hypernatremia. They can't get rid of it as someone without renal dysfunction could. So let me explain why you don't want to use or you want to be very sparing on, in using a hypertonic solution for someone with CHF. You can see that it's pulled the fluid here outside of the egg into the surrounding area fluid in the glass. And you can imagine on a CHF patient if you pulled fluid from their cells into the vessels how much extra fluid volume they would have that they had to get rid of. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the hypotonic egg from before and I'm going to put that in the hypertonic solution and I'm going to take the egg from the hypertonic solution and put it in the hypotonic solution. So we're just going to swap them and see what effect, if any, it will have on the eggs. So I'm just going to drop the hypertonic egg into the hypotonic solution here. And that was our one that was a little bit wrinkly, but not too terribly much. And I'm going to take the hypotonic egg that swelled up very nicely and put that in the hypertonic solution. And I used a spoon, I don't know if you guys noticed this before, but I used the spoon to keep it down when it's puffy like that, it tends to not want to stay down at the bottom, which is where the majority of the corn syrup settled. And you can't keep stirring it constantly, so we'll just put a spoon on it to hold it down. So we're going to go ahead here in a second and speed things up very quickly so you can see the changes in these eggs and this time we're going to do a close-up so if you enlarge the screen make it fill up your computer screen make it full screen you'll be able to see the growth of the egg and how quickly it puffs up now for the purposes of this video I have sped these up a great great deal. There was probably about three hours worth of footage that I wanted to get into this video of these eggs swelling and shrinking. You can kind of see on this one at the top of the screen how it is getting taller. That's part of the reason I put the blue tape on there is so that it gives kind of a backdrop. And what I'm doing to the hypertonic solution is I'm putting more corn syrup in and I'm also going to add some sugar because from where we had the other egg in it, it had drawn so much of the water out that it was super dilute. And you can kind of see it shrinking a little bit here before I put the sugar in. 
to make it more concentrated. So while we're watching this egg shrink a little bit or crenate, I want to talk to you about D5W, which is kind of an interesting IV fluid. Um, technically, it is isotonic, but essentially it is hypotonic. Um, dextrose in the D5W is readily absorbed by the body, leaving just the water behind. So you get a hypotonic effect on the cells because all you have left once the dextrose is used up is the water. So that's kind of a fluid imposter, if you will. It's masquerading as something else. All right, now let's switch over to the egg that we put in the hypotonic solution now and see what's going on with it. You can tell that it's already puffed up nicely. If you remember before, it was a little bit wrinkly, not too terribly much, but it's puffing up really nicely now. After I started looking in the hypotonic solution glass, I noticed that some of the syrup, it was getting kind of thick. It wasn't as clear as it was when I first put the egg in, so I'm just going to add some fresh water to that. All right, now we're going to take these out and check and see if they're any different. So just looking at the one from the hypertonic solution, you can see it's all wrinkly, it's crenated, it's shriveled. It's very, very um, compact. And I've put some dye in the isotonic solution because I want to show you guys how it looks on the inside. So I'm going to put the egg from the hypertonic solution into the isotonic solution. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. And we will do a close-up and speed this bad boy up again. If you look really close again, you can see some bubbling going on and you can see the egg starting to swell again towards the top. Okay, so while we were looking at the one in the normal saline, this one that's in the hypotonic solution actually just became so large that the membrane burst. So we'll pull that out of there. And so I'm glad this happened because this is actually the exact thing that happens with the cells inside your body. If, you know, the, they're exposed to too much of a hypotonic solution, they will burst and the contents will spill out, which is exactly what has happened here. You can see the yolk in there with the white around it. Just kind of pull it up so you can see it a little bit better. And so you can just imagine the damage that would happen to the body if this was a body cell. So we're back to the isotonic solution now and again you can see it going up at the top there we're going to pull the isotonic egg out and see how that solution affected that egg I'll just dry it off real quick and you can see that it's not wrinkled anymore like it was before. It is colored on the outside. There was food coloring in the water, or in this, I'm sorry, the saline solution. And now that we're all done, I'm actually going to shine a light through the membrane here of this egg so you can see the the yolk, or for our purposes, the nucleus, however you want to look at it. 
Um, and it's that dark area up at the top there. You can clearly see that the yolk is basically goes to the top of whichever way you turn it. You can see it moving up here. You flip it all the way around and it goes to the top again. So that's kind of a cool little trick. You can see through it with a flashlight. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how the dye affected the fluid on the inside of the egg. So wouldn't be as much fun with this project if we didn't pop this egg here. So just with a knife, just make a little nick and boom. And you can see the yolk is actually intact, but the internal contents of the egg, the white or the fluid, has been dyed and is almost a reddish orangish when compared to the yolk on the right side. Up the membrane here. It's very, very thin, super thin. And it's dyed completely red. There is no part of this that isn't deep, deep red. And I actually use red food coloring. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had fun. And make sure you click like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.